Welcome along to Nailtopia, Inside with the Insiders. I'm Rachel. In this podcast, we're going to talk to some of the nail industry's biggest and brightest. But I want to get to know the real them. I want to know the real stories. So come with me as we take a peek behind the curtain. So today I am with Carol Hailstone uh, in brackets, Sheeny. First off, can yes. I ask, what <laughs> is Sheeny? Well, what it is, um, when I got married, well, it was me, it was me maiden name. My maiden name is Sheehan, which is Irish. Oh, yes. Um, and it's spelled S-H-E-E-H-A-N. And when I lost my mum and dad a couple of years ago, um, it was my way of putting my mum and dad's name still there. Yeah. And I was called Sheeny when I was younger, so it was like Aww. my nickname when I was younger. Oh, and that's I thought so if, if anyone's ever looking for me on Facebook from years <laughs> ago, they'll know me as Carol Sheeny, not as yes. Carol Hailstone. Yeah. You know, so I thought I'll put the Sheeny in there and keep the family heritage because, you know, my family was important to me. Oh, <laughs> that's lovely. So, so then tell yeah. me, how did you get into the nail industry? All of it, all of your uh, story. Well, to be honest, I was quite old when I got into it. Um, I've been in the nail industry for like 12 years now. Um, and when I first, I was working in retail, I've worked in retail all my life, but I've always been like an arty person. So when I left school, I went to college and I did my A-level in art and stuff like that. But at that time, there was nowhere that you could channel your art into yeah. unless you went to uni and had all the, all the other academic stuff at that time. So I just sort of went into retail because my friends were in retail mm. and I got a job with this girl in um and it was do it all, you know, do it all DIY. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I went to work there and I was on the decorative department, which was right up my street, mixing paints and colours and putting wallpapers together and stuff like that. You know, helping yeah. customers put colours together, which was always something that I was interested in. I love interior design. Um, and then I went on, went on, ended up working for B&Q as well. I was with do it all for a long time. Then I went to B&Q, worked in a big warehouse in Warrington there. And I was the interior designer there. Oh, wow. And then I ended up working for Crown from that. Wow. And then I got made redundant, but I was always involved with colours and paint rag rolling and designing and stuff like that. And then I got made redundant from Crown. And that devastated me because I thought he had a job for life there and I really enjoyed it. Um, But in the meantime, I was going somewhere and all my nails are broken off because in retail you're moving shelving and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah. I'd always had good nails. And um, because my mum always had lovely nails and she sort of got me into, you know, looking after myself. Mm. That's why I've always worn makeup and things like that. So then when all my nails broke, when I was doing this retailing job for Crown, I went to get my nails done in the salon in Witness. And I'd never had my nails done. And I was like 37 or something like that. Because I always painted my own nails. I always done my own eye makeup and all the rest of it. And um, I went in the salon and the minute I walked in and I smelt the monomer, it oh. was like, oh, this smells lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and most people hate it, but well, oh, I know I love it. it but, oh, the smell was like, wow. And um, I sat down and there was, I think there was three tables in the salon. It's not there now. Oh. Um, and I just had white plastic tips with a clear overlay yeah I said to the woman can you do like some glitter and that and I think she's I scared us to death because I think they just did you know very basic them days it was just it was just French with a white tip and an overlay not not even sculpted or not even sculpted no no I and she said oh well we just do that so I said oh it's all right I said well can you put some diamonds on then because I like sparkle and she was like oh we haven't got any diamonds and I said oh it's all right anyway I was made up with the French I came out I was looking at my my nails I was like oh my god but I loved the whole thing like I was in the salon there was another two girls on the other side two clients and then we but we were there was six women in a small space yeah and I just thoroughly enjoyed the whole thing and as I was watching her do my nails I was like, oh, my God, I want to do it. I want to take the brush off her and do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, wow. It fascinated me. And I was like, oh, this is great. So what a fabulous job. I mean, I liked my job in Crown, but it had got to the point where they were putting a lot of pressure on us to do mm. a lot more stuff because it was driving around the Northwest and going to all the 
DIY stores and making yeah. sure all their all their stuff was in place and putting colour cards out. And it was quite a tough, it turned into quite a tough job in the end, which I wasn't bothered about, but I was getting a little bit. And I thought, what a bloody wonderful job to sit there and talk to women all day, drinking coffee and making them look good. So that I, was my, I, that's how I got into I it. I was like, this, I'd love this. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, wow. And I started looking um, at doing a course myself. And that's how I started. I went to, um, I went and got, I, 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 well, I, I did a course. Um, I think it was about, I think it cost me about 600 quid. Mm. And it was, you know, in my own time, I could do yeah. it. A certain, I went for a couple of days with them. And then we had to go back after a couple of weeks and stuff. So I did it round my job. And then when I got made redundant, I thought, why not? I'm going to have a go. And um, it went from there. And to be honest, my fellow had um, a taxi office. Well, he had a few taxi offices in Warrington. And they had a few little offices. And they got this one office. But they couldn't get planning permission to have the taxis pick up from outside oh, the office. Right. So he had this lease on this shop. And um, it was a hairdresser's. And he said, why don't you go in there? After I'd qualified, he said, go in there and, you know, put your, put your desk in there and see how, if you can get any client. <laughs> well, I didn't really know what I was doing because I'd passed me, 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 me exam, but I wasn't salon yeah. ready, really, because I think it takes about a year, doesn't it, if you pure practice before you're ready to and work being, on anyone. And, yeah, and being, being how, knowing how to run a salon and knowing how to do nails are yeah. completely different things. <laughs> I know. So I was thrown in at the deep end, really. And I, I did that for a bit. And then I got a girl come past who was a hairdresser and she said, can I come and rent a chair? So I said, yeah. So I got on really well with her. So she did the hair mm. and I did the beauty and the nails. But I also did my beauty course at night as well. All right. Yeah. Um, at college in the evening. Um, and then it went from there then. So I could do like the beauty and the nails. But it was ultimately as I went on, um, it was the nails that that drew yeah. me in more than anything else. I mean, I just, I like doing eyebrows and lashes and that, but it was just the nails for me. It was just, I loved it. It gets in your system, um, doesn't it? Yeah. And do you know what? I, from the minute I started doing it, I just thought, why didn't I do this when I left school? But it wasn't really a thing when I left school, you know, because I'm quite ancient. I mean, I'm 57 now, so... <laughs> I think nowadays, nails is part of, like, kids' lives, isn't it? You know, people... Yeah people taking their kids into the salon in the 13, which is wrong, but, yeah. you know, kid, girls have... They try and get them past us. A lot more advanced. I know, I know. <laughs> She's 16. She's I know. Si really? Really? I She's know. 16. I know. <laughs> I know. So it wasn't really a thing, so I had nowhere to channel my art, really, but when I finally found it, it was like a revelation to me. I absolutely love it. Oh. Um, and then we stayed in that salon for a bit, um, and then the rent was like really high because yeah. it was on the high street and it was quite a big unit. And it got to the point where I wasn't really making any money because then I was buying the product and I wasn't really making a profit. Um, so I had to walk away from it, to be honest. And I was absolutely devastated. Mm -hmm. We gave it to an Asian hairdresser in the end and because he, he had a lot of clients. Um, and then I was on the dole for a little bit. And then I saw an advert in the job centre for a part-time nail tech oh, wow. in a salon in Warrington over the way, not far from where my shop was. Um, and I went for the interview there, and I think because I was older mm. and I told the guy I'd had my own shop, which I had, but it yeah. wasn't like a successful salon. I mean, we had a couple of clients and that was it. You know, we ticked over. Um, but then he gave me the job, he gave me 30 hours in there, and there was a three three other girls working there and he had six stores all around the northwest he had one in liverpool one in wigan um st helens warrington so i started in there oh my god did i learn my craft in that shop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i honestly the girls were so fast yeah and so much better than me and i used to go home and cry oh because i could honestly i couldn't I couldn't compete with them. I couldn't do what they did. They sculpted a pink and white out from a form. And I'd only ever done like, I mean, we, we did sculpting on my course, but you know, mm. like everybody looks at sculpting and goes, oh, holy shit, I'm not, <laughs> that's yeah. too scary. I'll just stick a tip on. 
which you know I think both ways tipping and and sculpting to me is sculpting because you're still putting that product down definitely but they were doing this pink and white in an hour oh you know like free sculpted so I was like oh and my stomach was like a washing machine yeah. every time I went into work because I knew I had to get as good as they were so yeah. When I wasn't busy, I would sit next to the manageress and watch how she worked. And then I started to learn, you know, how to lay the stuff down. Um, and it was the traditional pink and white then. It wasn't yeah. the reverse. Yeah. It was just, you put the white onto the nail bed. So if your clients only had a small nail bed, you had a yeah. big lump of white <laughs> on the, <S laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. Not balanced. Can you remember that? I can, I, I it, can. I remember you know, the, the big, first time I saw a reverse square. pink and white and it was like, whoa, why have we not always been doing this? <laughs> yeah, I, I do know. remember. So it was like that and it was like all white. Um, and then I had my nails super long as well. Um, and it's funny because the girls were brilliant at it and I did get, I did get, you know, I got up to speed with it. Mm. Um, and then I started getting a few clients of my own because if anybody, they, the girls had regular clients coming in mm. all the time. So if somebody new came in, I got the newbies. And then eventually I ended up with some of my clients then. But what happened then was I started bringing my own glitters in and things like that. And oh, the girls right, were yeah. like, why are you bringing all this stuff in? And I said, well, because I loved it <laughs> so much and I had such a passion for it, it was like, I want to put glitter on them and I want to do this. I started doing the 3D. Yeah. Um, and the... And I wasn't getting paid for it. They were still yeah. charging the same. But obviously it was for this man who I was working for. I was just getting a wage. Yeah. And then I just got really into it. And the girls were going, God, you're really into it, aren't you? And then their clients started using colours as well. Then. And then I think nail art then became a lot more popular. Mm. And it just started. I got really busy then. So then after a couple of years of being there and I got on really well with the girls in there we all you know we had some great nights out and we all got there was no bitching they were really nice mm. girls and the manager has actually helped me a lot with my application and also put my forms on and stuff like that yeah um and the the big thing for me when I worked there was she was a bridesmaid for her best friend one year and I think after about a year of me working there she asked me to do the nails for the wedding oh, wow and yeah. she was the manageress, and I went, are you kidding me? And she went, no, Carol, I want you to do the French for me. And I was like, whoa, and I wow. cracked myself. But mm. she was, I said, are you messing? And she went, no, I said, don't look at them while I'm doing them because my <laughs> stomach was like turning. I said, I can't. Anyway, she looked at them at the end, and she was like this, you know, looking at them. And I said, oh, God, what do you think? And I was like, the blood had drained out my face. And she went, they're belting. And I yeah. was like, oh. And it was like, honestly, that was like probably better than winning any of the competitions of one or anything like that. It was exactly. like validation from her who'd been doing it for years, letting me do her nails and then yeah. saying they were belting really good. So, and then not long after that, my fella's like a proper businessman. Is he a serial he entrepreneur? Al- yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. And he, he's always been the one that sort of pushed me into doing more with myself because I'm mm. quite a stay at home kind of not stay at home but like stay put kind of place yeah. safe yeah you know not not really push myself as such yeah um, I get that and he was like that. yeah and he was comfy in it in familiarity he spotted a little shop in witness that was up for sale it was a little beauty salon hair not hair nails and beauty and it was next door next door but once for hairdressers and he said to me this is a nice little shop and the rent's really good. It's got parking. He said, Carol, why don't you go on your own? He said, you'll, you'll piss that. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon the language, but, you know, and I said, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm too scared. You know, I've only been there for so long. And he went, you know how to do nails, don't you? You know how to book them in. Yeah. He said, do it on your own. He said, you'll make, it, you'll make the rent in one day if you charge the same as what he's charging in yeah. his shop. So I kept thinking about it, and then he was going, you'd be daft if you don't, and blah, blah, blah. And then I thought, you know what? I had enough clients then, and Warrington and Witness aren't far from each other. No. Um, and he said, go for it. So I was like, hmm. Thought about it for a while, and then thought, now I'm going to do it. And luckily enough, the lady who was selling the salon was the niece 
of my best friend, but oh, I didn't wow. know at the time. Oh, crikey. That's and serendipity, I, so isn't it? When she found out, yeah, when she found out it was me who was interested and I was uh, Auntie June's best friend, it was <laughs> like a no-brainer. She was like, yeah, yeah, oh, I'd rather give it to somebody like you who I know. Yeah. Or, you know, I know me Auntie June would, wouldn't hang around with someone who's a, you know, a knob. <laughs> well, I am a knob, but... Um, Aren't we all? You get the idea, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> someone that you know. So she was like, she was quite happy to hand it over to me. And I had some of her clients as well. Mm. She still had another salon up in another part of Warrington, which was a while away. Um, and I went from there and it was good because where the salon was, it, was, it wasn't in the town centre. It was sort of just outside the town mm. centre, but it was in a very busy area with a pub over the road. It was on a row of shops. There was a hairdresser's and there was loads of parking outside. Plus loads of houses round, outside, yeah. round about. Cause, so there was loads of people who live nearby, who could just walk to the shop yeah. and get the nails done. And I just literally within, probably within not even six months, I was choco with a full diary to the point that I had to take other staff on in the end. And that's great. Ended up, we ended up four of us working there. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and it boomed. It was, it was really good. Um, and I honestly, it was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. I had like, I had a lot of ups. I had a lot of downs. I was thinking of even writing a book on it, to be honest, on on the whole how to be a nail tech and how to avoid all the crap and palaver. I don't know how to go about it, but I think I've got I think I'd have a lot of information and a lot yeah. of a lot to give back to other people. And I think it's a great idea. Others. Yeah, I, I help think it would help so many people. Yeah. Because yeah. we all fall into those yeah. pitfalls, um, don't we, when we're starting out. The yeah. same pitfalls you've you've encountered. I, I was explaining on a, a, another podcast that uh, I I had, it was actually with Lisa Smith, uh, and I, she was saying, you know, if she could wave a magic wand and make people change how they come into the industry, rather than sliding in sideways, that they would take their time, they would do their business plans, they would blah, blah, blah. And I said, to be yeah. honest with you, Lisa, I drove past a hairdresser's after walking out of a job at an optician's. Uh, where I was doing a bit of nails for my mates and I just stopped my car outside this hairdressers and went in and went can I have that space under your window and that was that was the amount of the Did planning you? I had put into yeah. it was literally the oh there's a hairdresser's really close to my house yeah there's a space behind that window that was the that was the full extent of my planning about going self-employed yeah. and starting my own business was can I have that space and then going yeah, yeah. and I went out to Staples yeah. and bought a desk <laughs> and I put it in the window um, yeah. So yeah. So a lot of us have made. I suppose if you think about it, as a from a business perspective, it's not a good way to do it. But there were times when it what there were times when you could do it that way. It's a lot harder now, I think, not to get the planning right yeah. and and not get the business plan, not know, because you've got so many pitfalls now with with tax and with benefits and with um, HMRC, all the things that you have to deal with that it's not as yeah. easy now to just take a risk. How important yeah. did you think it was that if you were, had to do it all again now, how would, yeah. would you, do you think you would have struggled to do it the way you did it? How would you do it differently if you were to do it now? The, the good thing for me was, because like I said, I had a, a businessman behind me. Yeah. You know, Ian, my husband, is is has run his businesses since he was younger and all yeah. his family are all you know they all have their own business so when I met him they all used to talk about taxes and um you know leasehold and freehold and all these things yeah. about businesses and I was just sit there going because I was working in B&Q then yeah. and I was always employed so I'd never gone into the self-employed world at all um so when he he was saying go into this salon he sort of did a lot of that for me you know we worked out my taxes and yeah. said about the rent and things and since then I've obviously learned a lot more about it um you know in in that regard that all those things that you've got to go through yeah it's not just about you know pretty glitter and making you know <laughs> yeah. chatting unfortunately it, it is, you know, <laughs> yeah I know um but for me I I probably well, I was okay I was lucky because I had this man who could help me out yeah. and he'd run businesses before and he knew that it would work because yeah. the I mean for me 
what I would say to anybody now who was going to get a space of their own would be, you know, make sure that it's somewhere where people can see you. And it's also that the rent is the most important thing. Yeah. If you've got a really, really high rent, then I wouldn't bother because yeah, you will just yeah. struggle and struggle and struggle for all the other things that you've got to pay out your tax, you know. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to consider, you know, you've got your insurance and everything else, but because mm. my, I was lucky with that building, mm. it was a really, really low rent. It's actually gone up now. And to be honest, one of the reasons why I finished, besides me getting an allergy, but that's another story, was my lease was coming to an end because I had, I think it was seven years lease, yeah. at that rent and then at the end of that lease I knew it was going to go up double treble yeah to what it was so yeah. by this time when we came to South Africa which is nearly three well two and a half years ago it, I'd come to the end of my lease and my husband had sold his business so it, I knew it was time to get out then mm. because I knew that the lease was going to go up and to yeah. be honest with you by the by that time I had my a really good clientele base I probably could have moved it into my front room at home. That's yeah. probably what I would have done if we hadn't come over to South Africa. But I do think you have to really look at the finances and not just get all excited and oh, there's a salon. Mm. It's not that easy, you know. There's a lot of a lot of money involved in it and a lot of things that you've got to consider. It's really easy to get carried yeah. away, isn't it? When you, because, yeah. I mean, all those yeah. years, all these years later, I still haven't learned my lesson because the salon I'm in at the minute. Um, I'd had my eye on years and years and years ago and they w- the person that owned it wanted to leave it basically derelict and then four years ago I was driving past and there was a skip outside and I'd got a salon elsewhere but in my heart it was the one you I wanted, wanted. so I just again yeah. I just stopped the car and went in and went can I rent this off you <laughs> and he's like it's months away from being ready I'm like that's all right I'm getting married in two weeks and I'm going on honeymoon in a month can I have it when I come back? And he's like, you don't even know how much it is. And I'm like, but I want it. So yeah. sometimes we just don't learn, do we? But um, I know sometimes, sometimes it's just something in your heart, isn't it? I mean, to be honest with you, when I, when I left the salon and I was coming to South Africa, oh my God, it broke my heart to leave mm-hmm. the place. I, I think I had so many, so many experiences, good things and bad things. I had so much of myself in that shop. Yeah. I felt like it had a heartbeat and yeah. it was part of me. I know that sounds like really no, dramatic, but that's how I much feel exactly the place. Yeah, I feel exactly yeah, the same about mine. And like, yeah, it was just like my magical place. And everybody who came in loved it. I mean, people would just come in and have a coffee and yeah. it was a very sociable place. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Probably some people would say, well, you know, you should be more more professional. professional. And it wasn't clinical. It was, yeah, it, you know, it... it it was the Northwest and people yeah. in the Northwest are, are yeah. really like, you know. It's yeah, more, it was in Yorkshire are exactly the same. We, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I pride and myself like, on my clients, actually. I pride myself on my clients coming in and saying it, it's so homely. And I suppose yeah. for a salon, it should be, oh, it's so professional. But no, I really pride myself on yeah. it's so homely here. Yeah, because I know, I mean, I... I, like I said, I didn't really go in salons apart from having my hair done. And I always felt that whenever I went in a hair salon, I used to feel very um, self-conscious. Mm. If you walk into a hair salon and all the stylists are doing hair and nobody actually acknowledges you when you walk in. I know. And I think, I think my experience of working in retail all them years and working in the shops, it gave me the customer service. I already had mm. that. And I'm also like a Gabby, <laughs> as you can tell, <laughs> a Gabby a Gabby people person. So I found that part of it really, really easy. And that's just the way I am. I mm. can't be, I can't sit there, you know, with my hair pinned back and no earrings and just be the clinical beautician. Yeah. I'm not like that. You know, I am what I am. I talk too much. We cry, we laugh. Oh, I'm gosh, with women. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But I also pride myself on doing, you know, hopefully a good job yeah. because it's my passion. You know, yeah. and it's to me, it's not a job. Well, it's a job, but it's it's the best job in the world. Really I agree. Is. I agree. I am um, t- like 24 years ago when I started, I said to myself, I'll just do this until I find a, what I want to do in my life. 
And yeah. I joked with somebody the other day that 20 years later, when I was sitting at midnight waiting for the launch of a new set of gel polish colours, I finally had an <laughs> aha moment. It was like, oh, OK, so I'm a tech then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in the I know, I know. Gel it does, I think it's in, your bl- it's in your blood. And it's like, even though I've come here, supposedly, to um, semi-retire, yeah. the minute I got here, I was looking around at the salons and I was... not particularly wanting to work as such, but yeah. I got to know the lady in the bar down the road and I did her nails and I ended up doing, I've got a couple of clients here, but not too many because my fellow wanted to come over because he's always worked hard, he had a lot of businesses and stuff. Yeah. He wants to come over, walk down the beach and just have some time to ourselves because yeah. we both, because we didn't have kids, we both, and that's another story, but we both had, um, we both worked really, really hard, like yeah. long, long hours, weekends, Christmas, New Year's Eve. Yeah. You know, we did a lot of work. So he, when he came here, he was like, I just want to enjoy it now. I don't want you saying, oh, I've got such and such a body in for him, Phil's every Tuesday. He said, that's yeah. going to, you know. So I, what I said to the ladies I do here is, I'll do them for you, but only when I can and I'm not. Yeah. I don't want you, I know it sounds awful, but I don't want you knocking on my door saying you broke an ale because I won't entertain you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because oh gosh, wouldn't that my be little lovely? studio is in is, is in the house, do you know what I mean? And I basically and I think now, now I've learned all what I've learned over the years, that's how I would run it again now if I was gonna do it again, which mm. I am probably gonna do something again because I I think I told you well, I haven't announced it yet, but Breaking I am news, back guys. to the UK. Yay! Yeah, I am coming back to the UK. Woo! <laughs> um, but more of a, um, I'm hoping to train people more and then mm-hmm. maybe just do, you know, my, my special clients who stayed in touch with me and yeah, who I, my friends and I enjoy doing them yeah. and stuff. Because I got, like I said before, I had, um, I have suffered a really bad allergy with the products as well. So yeah. I can't, I physically couldn't do what I was doing. The hours, again. the amount of, yeah the products yeah my hands my hands just split completely it's yeah. just wear gloves a double glove I've tried everything under the sun I'm just allergic to it and I yeah. just literally cannot do it as much now so do you but think I've that's built up to over offer. time or or do you think no it, it it pretty much started um after about I would say probably after about three or four years of me yeah. doing nails it started yeah and I can, it's weird because I can wear nails. Yeah. And I can do nails for three or four days and not have a problem. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I can just touch a gel polish or something oh, yeah. and, I, and I'm on fire. So I, I think it, part of it is like, part of my mind is like, I'm not giving into it because yeah. I love nails that much. I'm not going to stop. So yeah. I work myself through it. But yeah. some days, some nights, I'm lying in bed and my hands are burning and itching. And if, if anybody out there has suffered an allergy, they'll know exactly what I'm on about. Yeah. It's like, it's horrific. And your skin splits. I mean, my thumb's all split now. I'm trying to heal it. So I'm just, I would like to teach, yeah. really, you know. I'm sure there's probably an awful lot of people that are like, uh, sign me up. I'll take that class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take my so money now. Once, once, <laughs> Yeah, once I get back, I've got to get um, I've got to get myself sorted. We've got to get back. We've got a lot of things to sort out. You'll have to come um, down to Sheffield and do a training day at Utopia. You know, I've said yeah, it on camera well, now. You, know, you, have, you have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to, to be honest with you, I'm, I, I would probably be interested in you know, host somebody hosting me and doing that. Yeah, you know, depending on what you want. What you know? What I'm teaching? If you think I'm good enough, yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. Let's talk about so, your art because I the artwork you produce, like you said, you've always been interested in colours and stuff. When did you yeah. like, suddenly discover you could create these amazing canvases? When did that uh, revelation oh, come thank to you? you? To be honest with you, even from from when I was a kid, when I was in school, I was only really good at in school at art and English. Okay. I can spell quite well and I can write quite well. Um, and my drawing just came natural to me. I was like drawing and painting and art was my favourite lesson. Pottery, I loved that in oh. secondary school. Um, so that that's always been there. And I used to draw portraits years ago when I first left school. I was on the dole for about two years when I left school and I started doing portraits of the children in the school. Oh. So it's always kind of been there. And then obviously you get a job and... Yeah. You start earning your money and 
it was one of them things where you can't really earn money with your art unless you go to uni and mm. you know I, there was no way I was going to go to uni because I wouldn't have got me maths you had to have maths behind you you know I probably could have got me English but my mum and dad didn't have that kind of money you know no. we were just northern family and my dad had a good job but you know he liked to drink and we were just normal mm. working class we were them days you couldn't just go uni you have to have a bit of money behind yeah. you yeah yeah um so it came from there really and then obviously when I came over to South Africa I had a lot more time to to play and I thought I'll have a little go of painting because I had my little studio here and um when my hands play up that's the way I sort of channel me creative like thing because every it can be like three or four days and I don't do any art and then all of a sudden it bubbles up like when you've oh. got a bad stomach and you've got to go to the <laughs> it's like that's the way I can describe it it's like it bubbles up inside me and I've got to go and do some art yeah it's like yeah gotta get my paints out and do it it's it's that yeah. it, it's like that inside me and then like a compulsion um, and then I have to do it yeah yeah um so it went from there then and I'd always sort of been scared of um oil paints because people say oh it's toxic and it stinks and it, it makes you ill and all this I got some oil paints from Ian's nan she passed away and she did quite a lot of art and I brought it all over with us on the container when we came and I had all these art, oil paints and that was a revelation because oil paint is amazing to work with and I could work with it really well yeah it blends gorgeous I love it so I did a couple of oil paintings and that, but the only thing with that is it takes ages to dry. Oh, right. Too much paint yeah. on. So when I found out that we were going to go back to the UK, obviously I've got to start packing all my things up. So I haven't done anything for a while because I know mm. I'm going to leave wet oil paint everywhere. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yes. So it's just gone from there, really. So it's something that I would probably like to do some paintings to sell when I come to the UK. You know, if somebody wanted well. something. Yeah. Yeah. And you can and I'd like to do. And you transfer that skill very beautifully to, to the one stroke that you do an awful lot of on and the acrylic flowers you do on the wine glasses and all that. Yeah. 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 It's just sort of evolved from the nail thing yeah. into into bigger putting canvases. On, putting yeah. it on items like furniture, you know. I've put it on my fit. Yeah, literally. You, you did your jeans, so don't you? You've done all you've one stroke tall, one stroke painting all yeah. your jeans. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. So, and I think in the UK, because while I'm here, I've had loads of people inbox me to be honest, asking if I'll do paintings for them or glasses mm -hmm. and things like that. But being in South Africa, the postal system is just like on a different level. It's not like the UK. Yeah. So there's no way like <laughs> If you send something from South Africa, it would take literally about four months to get to the UK yeah, yeah. and vice versa. So there's no way I can send stuff out or anything. No. So with me coming back to the UK, you know, maybe I can make glasses for people and sell them. And oh, I'm, I'm planning to do a little bit of everything, really, yeah. if I can. That, ideally, I'd love to do that. Teach, do a bit of art, sell some canvases, do some special nails. Mm. You know, like for weddings or special occasions. Um. And like I say, do me little diehard clients who love me to bits. Yeah. Um, and who I love in turn. Back. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's the plan. So let's talk about um, what the reasoning was behind, other than your husband wanting some time. Why did you choose South Africa? Mainly because we, over the years, we, our, main, our main holiday destination was South Africa and Dubai and Spain. Mm. Um, and we did think about Spain, but the properties in Spain are really expensive. Mm. In South Africa, it's very English, even though it's very diverse and there's a lot of nationalities here. Pretty much everybody speaks English. Yeah. The properties are really, really cheap here. Yeah. The climate is lovely. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's it's absolutely stunning, beautiful country. Yeah. Um, they drive on our side of the road, so that was yeah. a big thing for me because. <laughs> There's no way I can drive in Spain. I had a go in Spain and then and, and I nearly crashed into something because I couldn't get my head around yeah. going the other way. Do you know what I mean? On the other I side. Agree. Um, and then I, I, more what you can get for your money, to be honest. Yeah. You, can, you can live really, really well here for a lot less than you can in the UK. The only downside to South Africa, which everybody was saying to me, was the crime and everything. But We'd already had quite a lot of, we'd been burgled quite a few times at home anyway. Yeah. 
any bad behaviour yeah. apart from, you know, the burglary. Yeah. And we had our car stolen. But like I say, that can happen anywhere, can't it? I mean, no. the amount of people over here that I've, I know that have had the car stolen. Um, a friend, yeah. of, friend of mine the other day um, had her car stolen. So you can get that anyway. They don't care, do they? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So when you come back um, and you've uh, done some of your classes, are we going to see you possibly think about maybe a salon or are you just going to try and focus on, on education? Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet because... My husband is looking at, uh, uh, looking for a business himself. Ah, so depending on you can't stop a serial entrepreneur on, working, can you? They have to. He can't help himself. <laughs> so he's looking at a couple of businesses at the moment, um, and whether any of that goes through, it all depends on that. Mm. You know, as to what happens. So, so um, if we manage to keep you out of a salon, can we? Can we expect maybe, like I said, hosting up and down the country, guys? If you've got a salon and yeah. you want Carol to come and be hosted. Yeah, look forward to yeah, the probably, world tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or if you know, depending on what where we are or what I'm doing, I'm like I say, it's all up in the air at the minute. Or even you know, if I, the house that we've got in Witness, it's got a nice big room, two big mm. rooms at the front that I could probably utilise a yeah. a salon or a training room because it's quite big. Yeah, you know, and host little training things there, but. That's going to be, you know, it's going to take me a couple of months to get yeah. everything sorted and everything. So, but yeah, I, I would be up for, um, you know, traveling somewhere or whatever. Probably yeah. not every week. No. Just enough to, you know, just enough to keep Stop that bubbling. To stop to keep that bubbling yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, quite, I quite like having time to myself at the moment, to be honest. I've enjoyed doing what I want, but the old, yeah. I mean, I can always go in my room. Yeah. And get a nail fix without without a client anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can go in my room and practice, which is what I do most days anyway. I, I at least have a couple of hours in my room just painting my tips and yeah. doing my competition doing work and stuff yeah. like that. So let's talk about competition yeah, so. work. What kind of what kind of advice would you give people who are considering competition work? Because it's it's not as easy as you know, just whacking a few designs together, is it? No. Um, to be honest with you, I've been trying to I've been competing for years and years and I've never, ever got further than fourth, fifth. I think fourth was the highest I got and I never got that third place. And it, for me, to place in the competition was my goal yeah. for years. And I kept getting fourth and fifth, never got third. And all I wanted was third. <laughs> um, but I kept on going. I think you have to keep on going. Yeah. And I think there's a lot more competitions out there now, yeah. which I think, I mean, some people are saying it's flooded with competitions and maybe it is, and it's been quite nice because it's all online. It's not yeah. as hard as maybe doing a floor competition. I've Definitely. done floor competition and that is really scary as well. I did one. Um, but I think I think people should just do it, you know. Um, why not? Have a go. Yeah. And I think you learn a lot. I learned a lot from the competitions because... I thought I knew what I was doing and then you get feedback from your judges and then you go oh yeah and then you realize and you start to see where you're going wrong and what you're doing wrong and and how how some of them are really like they really zoom in and look at yes. every little brush stroke you know and the main thing I've learned is to follow the rules yeah you know a lot of people can do fantastic artwork but if you don't follow the rules of that competition in particular you can lose loads of points. Yeah. So sometimes it's not always the best Prettiest. artwork that wins. It's the yeah. one. Yeah. It's the one that's followed the rules or hit gone the brief. Along with. Yeah. 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 Um, but I would also say I think some people put too much emphasis on the, a competition. Yeah. For me, you're a winning nail technician if you have a full book or even half a full book or whatever. Yeah. if you've got clients coming to you and they're paying for your service you're a winner to me anyway just yeah. to sit at that desk exactly and have the confidence to do somebody's nails it takes a lot so it's not always about winning a competition but that's nice yeah. if you can you know if you can get it as well I know, think this last lovely. year any salon or any tech that has come out of the year yes. we've had and the yeah. and and has had a phone call or a text message from even one client saying, "I can book in again. When can you fit me in? You've yeah. won. You've won 
the biggest yeah. thing in the world because you survived. And I read something yes. the other day that something like 5,000, might be more, I, I know it was five something thousand or 50,000 or whatever, salons have closed um, yeah. because of COVID. And I think anybody yeah. that has managed to open their doors or get back in their car and drive to a client and, and somebody's handed you money, you have won. Yeah. Because you've yeah. survived the biggest call our yeah. industry has ever seen. And Hello. it's just a phenomenal achievement to still be working. And they will come back. We're not fully there yet. We're not fully open. We're not fully away from restrictions. You've won. You are back at work. You survived. You are still yeah. technically working. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody deserves just like a really big the pat on the back. Is, a lot of people haven't got that. A lot of people haven't got that income at the moment as well. They're trying yeah. to get themselves back on their feet, aren't they? And exactly. then, like you say, some people, I mean, I know some of my clients in the UK have grown their own. So yeah. even when I, if I was going, if I was still in the UK with my salon, some of them probably wouldn't come back to me because they've yeah. grown their own, you know. Everything's, I think the world has changed yeah. and everybody's had to change with it. Mm. Some good and some bads come out of it, you mm. know, but. For me, it's not just about winning a competition, but don't get me wrong. I mean, I tried really hard to get my trophies and I'm very proud of them. I've yet to even get them because they're all <laughs> my mum in laws in boxes because I had everything sent over there because yeah. I knew I wouldn't get it here. It yes. would get yeah. lost. And then I'd have to try and get it back. So I've got all these lovely trophies to open when I come back. So that's something to look forward to. Oh, but I'm looking forward to a big whole... Facebook stream of just loads of trophies. Yeah, <laughs> there will it will be happening. Just wait for it. But, then, um, but yeah, anybody who, who's who's before COVID, COVID, after COVID, who does this job, you know, it's hard. I mean, I read a lot of the time and you see on all the forums, you see a lot of girls saying, I'm so nervous. I've got this client coming in for a French and I'm not 100% with a French. And, oh, she wants a marble and I don't know how to do it. Or they're bringing in these pictures in from, uh -huh. from Instagram or whatever, from these, these nail techs who are like top of the game, yeah. you know, and they expect, you know, a day-to-day -day salon to be able to do I just the top-end, high-end <laughs> You know, the, and there's limits, isn't there? You know, yeah. you can say, I, you don't even have to say I can't do it. You can just say I've got the equipment here yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, You've got an hour slot, that's know, four hour it, set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of the girls and lads, whoever it is, are scared to say I can't do it or whatever. But yeah, it's a hard, it's hard because I know when I was in that first salon and I used to go home and cry. My stomach would be turning over at every client came in front of me because I knew yeah. I couldn't do it as good as the girl next to me, you know. But yeah. that comes with that comes with experience, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. So anyone who's doing it as a job and getting paid, you're the winner to me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> competition or no competition. Yeah. Exactly. And take the feedback because the feedback, if you are doing competitions or even just people on your Facebook page leaving comments and feedback. Yeah. Take, take it as as it is it's not it's not none of it's unless somebody's calling your names it's not meant to well, some, yeah some, it's something to learn it's from good. yeah it's something to learn from is, especially yeah. with the competitions because you know yeah. constructive criticism it's like make that a bit better next time you can learn and every mistake you make is a lesson that you learn from so yeah. don't go home that's and, how yeah don't go home and make yourself beat yourself up that's how you get better and better that, that's how you learn how to do that thing because you've done it wrong. You can't yeah. do it right. You might do the odd thing right, but the only way you learn how to do anything is by continually doing it wrong and continually trying to get it right. This is what people, like, when when I've done training with people, you know, they come, oh, I want to be as good as you, and I'm like, I'm not good. I've just practised. Yes. This is me sitting down every night practising. It took me at least seven months after I'd trained in me one-stroke class to actually for it to click yeah it didn't come to me overnight it no. didn't and you've got to practice it doesn't you don't just turn into Anita Padova overnight <laughs> you know. no I remember well, doing a she's set of, naturally talented oh some people just are <laughs> aren't they don't you just hate them yeah. I remember doing a negative yeah. space set for a client she'd come in and she'd seen a pop star on an awards and she wanted this negative space be just next to her cuticle and I got all but two fingers from the end when I suddenly went there was a much easier way of me doing this. <laughs> it was like two yeah. fingers from then. Well, that's it, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. oh my God, this could have been so much simpler. This could, I, yeah. oh my God, what a dunce. 
So the next time somebody came in and wanted negative space nails, I was like, I know how to do that really easily. <laughs> exactly. And it was because I'd made exactly. that mistake, and, yeah. And I think as well, if I think if something's worrying you, and such a, I'll use French as, a, as an example because it was always my nem- nemesis. Yeah. I, I trained with loads of people on how to do it and it never clicked with me. And I, every time I tried to do it, it looked like a dog's back leg. I just couldn't get the crispness of the sides yeah. or anything. Um, and I went, I went to Gemma Porch's place. She's a friend of mine, Gemma, yes. who owns CJP. Um, I went to see Gemma and she said, She'd done the one stroke training a few times and she mm. said, Why don't because I said I'm struggling with this bloody smile lines and hers were lovely. Mm. And she said, Why don't you come to mine one day when I'm off? This was before she got massive in the company. Yeah. It was when she was first started off with the powders. And she said, Come to mine. You show me how to do one stroke and I'll show you how to do French. Mm. So I said, It's a deal. And we've mm. always got on well anyway. Mm. So I went round and we had a great day. She made me dinner and everything. I did the one stroke with her, she did the smile lines. And for me, it just the way she described it and how she did it, it just clicked for me. And now, after that, then I started putting a French in most of my clients' sets yeah. just so that I could get used to doing it. Keep and then it started, and then it was like, wow. And then I was like, do you want a French? I was saying to people, do you want a French? Because I can do a French, you know. And then <laughs> I, I got really, I got really, because I tried so hard, then it became well I think quite good at it now yeah so for me it doesn't scare me and I think once you get through that barrier of whatever is scaring you go and learn it because when you learn it it won't scare you anymore yeah and then whatever comes and sits in front of you whoever whoever comes and sits in your chair they're not going to scare you because you can do a marble you can do one stroke Mm. you can do that sculptured nail you can use a tip you know you can do a french you can do an ombre exactly you had to sit in your room and do it on tips and teach yourself yes that's what I over did. and over and over Re- I think people think key. you can just go yeah I've passed me I've passed me um I've passed me my test now I'm I'm qualified yeah you know I was to lay down but it takes years oh, years God. and years you don't just go oh I can do an ombre like that bang done. Yeah. it's not like that you have to practice for definitely years. definitely so, yeah. right, one of the things I ask everybody is about when they were growing up, what was their dream job? What did you want to be when you were growing up? Because not we don't <laughs> all grow up wanting to be nail techs. Very few of us grow up wanting no. to be nail techs. What did you want to be? I wanted to be a ballerina, which Aww. is like typical. It's typical, isn't it, of a girl, yeah. girl really, who likes pink. <laughs> um, yeah, I, want, I wanted to be a ballerina. I wanted to be like Margot Fontaine. Oh. I, I started doing dance classes when I was about six, I think, up until I was about 13, 14. So I did ballet for yeah. quite a few years and I got really into it. You know, my little tutus and we'd done a couple <laughs> of shows and um, and I thought I, that's what I was going to do. But obviously yeah. then when you get to like 13, 14, your body changes. Yeah. Then I got chubby. <laughs> I got chubby and I didn't have the Boobs body for ballerina. <laughs> yeah. And then, Boys, boys come on the scene and then it's not cool to go and do ballet and yeah um, and that was it then and then to be honest I didn't really have a plan as to what to do I just sort of my nan always used to say to me you need to go and study or you need to go and do something and learn what you're going to do and I did think about hairdressing as well because I always loved hair I still love hair now I watch mm. videos of hair being cut coloured hair up yeah. fascinates me absolutely fascinates me I love watch I could sit my dream day would be to sit in a hair salon and watch someone getting you know everybody getting their hair done I love that <laughs> Crikey, I wish yeah, I'd done it really yeah would you consider would you consider learning to do it now or is it just like I'd just rather watch somebody else do it I probably would I probably could you know I don't know whether you know 57 now whether I've got the brain power to actually learn all those angles and I know a little bit about it and that because I do like watching it but I don't I think I think after watching what I've watched I think it's hard enough being a nail tech yeah I would be terrified doing someone's hair because if you mess someone's hair up you can't just soak it off can you (laughs) no you know it's gonna come off in two weeks you could that hair off too short or you wreck their hair with bleach that takes a lot of time for it to grow back so yeah for me kudos to all those hairdressers out there because I think that's 
I think it's a really tough job. I yeah, think. So oh, I think they're amazing. I 100 percent agree. I I can't even I can't even do a French plat. So <laughs> yeah, I grew up. My daughter every day. My daughter going, can I have a French plat for school? No. <laughs> I can do a normal plat, but I can't do all that weave thing. Oh, no. You can have a bobble. But I'd like to it. learn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to learn it because I do. I do think it's fascinating, and I love. Mm. I like doing my own hair. I like messing around with my own hair. But um, but yeah, I think I'd be a bit too scared to do it now. But I wish. I always look back now and wish I'd done it. To be honest, because I think if you can do nails and hair, yeah. you'll never be out of money. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you'll always make money, won't you? Exactly. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So what's other than coming back to England? What are your what are your dreams for your future? We're probably yeah doing 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 my art, doing a bit of nails, doing a bit of training. I want to sort of um, it's it's this break away from being mad busy in my salon mm. has made me realise that I can actually go for a walk and look at the trees and look at the beauty around me. You know, I think you need to have time for yourself, which mm. I wasn't doing. For years and years, I was just non-stop work, work, work. Um, and luckily enough, you know, my husband's willing, he wants to go back and do a bit. Because I think we've both had this long break now. Yeah. We both want to come back and do something, but not as as full on as what we were. So basically just go along and enjoy life, really, and try and... I think now I've got to this age, I've gone through my menopause and the hard bits. I'm, I'm at that age now where, thankfully, I'm still quite healthy. Yes. And for me, it's important now for me to enjoy my life because yeah. I don't know how long I've got. Yeah. You know, when you get to a certain age and you think, I just want to enjoy my life. Yeah. I just want to do my paints, play with my cats, you know, <laughs> do a bit of work, spread the nail love. Yeah. Just enjoy life. Christ, like, life's hard enough. I don't want to be head down not enjoying myself. I like yeah. going out and having a few drinks. I want to see my friends and my family. You know, that's important to me. Oh, and when yeah. you're younger, you don't see that. No. And no one can teach it yet. You have to do it yourself. You have to get to this age now. Now, I just want to say sorry if everyone's just listening to me ramble because, do you know what? I really do miss talking to people. And where I am now and, and how we live, and I don't see a lot of girls now, a lot of women. So when I do see another woman, I'm like... <laughs> And I talk too much, and I'm sorry, but in it, there's especially no if such talking thing. to me about nails, <laughs> there's no such nails thing. is me massive. It's, nails is me passion, so yeah, you know, I could talk about nails for bloody hours and hours and hours. So, I, and I, I just want to say thanks very much, actually, for asking me to come on because oh my god, I was I'm so honoured honored. when you said yeah. Oh, I was, I was literally no, honoured to be asked. My husband was like, when I'm like, <laughs> you'll never guess, and he's like. Oh, look at you. And I was like, I honestly, like, <laughs> I feel a little bit sick. I'm so excited. And he's like, You're doing all right, you are, you? Yeah. I'm like, Yeah, I, I honestly, when you said yes, and you're like, Oh, you got so, you were like, Yes, I'm, I'd be honored. And I was like, oh, I've made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like I've made it because you've asked me to do something like this. And like, oh. just little old me from Liverpool. <laughs> I think this is something you know, that but... everybody needs to understand is that no matter what you are where you are what you do or how many people look at you and admire you or don't know who you are that somebody yeah. out there is going to go I'm really honored you asked me to do something with you um yeah. and that, that everybody is just a normal person in their in their own heads they're just me and I'm just yeah, me absolutely. and I'm just just I don't yeah so yeah. so yeah. thank you so much for coming and, and doing this and hopefully when you get back oh, to no England problem, honey. We might in a year or so revisit the podcast and have a talk oh, about yeah, what's absolutely what's been happening since you came back and joined us over here. And hopefully we will yeah. hopefully I will see you in Sheffield. And if not, I will travel to wherever you are and do some because I yeah. really oh, brilliant. I desperately need to learn one stroke. I have learned one stroke and the minute I walked out of the class, put my brushes in my car and didn't touch them again because I was like nope yeah so you could teach me one stroke <laughs> and I'll teach you podcasting yeah <laughs> so Carol, yeah that would be yeah. cool I love yeah. this idea it's brilliant. it's brilliant so Carol yeah. thank you so much for today and good luck with oh, your return welcome. to England and we will see you, you very very soon oh you will ah oh, thanks baby take care now yeah bye <laughs> bye, -bye love bye bye Thank you for listening to today's episode of Nailtopia Inside with the Insiders. If you have enjoyed it, you can show me your support by heading over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Nailtopia, where you can help keep me in Yorkshire Tea and Savvy Bee, enabling me to keep chatting to nail industry insiders with the stories you just need to hear. 
You can also check out what else Nailtopia is about on both Facebook and Instagram. <laughs>